Snastruck. Hello, the SNES Classic has been out for a while. It's sold over 2 million units worldwide, and you can hack the thing to add whatever SNES or Super Famicom games you want. There's a link in the description that shows you how. Meanwhile, I've had more than a few people ask me to make a video like this, so here you go. I've just picked 13 games because otherwise I could go on all day, which would end up defeating the purpose of this video. These aren't in any kind of order, either, just so you know. I should address very quickly here that I'm varying the selection here between all sorts of genres and gameplay styles, which means I'm not going to be picking any sequels for this video. I mean, that should be obvious anyway. If you like Mega Man X, then add X2 and X3. If you like Donkey Kong Country, then add the next two games. Speaking of obvious, if you've hacked your SNES Classic and you haven't added Chrono Trigger, well, I mean, why not? It just belongs with this collection. When I'm scrolling through the menu and I come to Contra 3, it really feels like there's a giant hole there. All these great RPGs, but not the best of the bunch. And why is Chrono Trigger the best? Because not only does it nail all the conventional JRPG aspects like a balanced combat system, a great soundtrack, and incredible visuals, throwing in some great bonuses like a dual and triple tech magic system, but it's the way its huge sweeping story is told. Everything from the main narrative, to the structure, to the big showdown with Magus, to the point where the game really opens up to all sorts of different paths for you to take. If you've never played Chrono Trigger, a hacked SNES classic is as good of a time to start playing it as any. Then there's stuff like Terranigma. I was really hoping this would be part of the group of games out of the box because it's a great game that was never released in North America, so it would have been a perfect opportunity to introduce it to a new audience. Instead, they went with Star Fox 2 as the selling point, and that's not a bad choice, but still, Terranigma is such a good action RPG. If you liked stuff like Illusion of Gaia, Soul Blazer, or Link to the Past, then you'll really enjoy this one. This is one of those games that's definitely worth playing all the way to its conclusion because the story sticks with you long after you've finished it. There is an additional pattern you'll need to apply in order for Terranigma to work on the SNES Classic, but I've got a link to it in the description. I thought it was kind of odd that a few genres were omitted from the out-of-the-box game lineup entirely, like beat-em-ups for example. I understand there were licensing issues keeping Turtles in Time off the list, but I guarantee you if that weren't an issue, this game would definitely be on there. It's the best 16-bit beat-em-up ever because of the crazy settings, the innovative ways to make foot soldiers go boom, and the general chaotic nature of the gameplay that makes you feel like anything can happen at any time. And of course, this game is two-player co-op. Speaking of multiplayer, I thought it was peculiar that Nintendo made sure to include a second controller with the SNES Classic, but only chose 7 of the 21 games that featured co-op or versus multiplayer capability. So what the hell, let's throw in another beat-em-up here with Final Fight 3. It's a well-made game with 4 playable characters, including Guy returning to the fold. This game is co-op, but you can also play with an AI-controlled second player as well if you'd like. If you'd rather go with a co-op beat-em-up that's a little more under the radar, then there's stuff like King of Dragons, Knights of the Round, Sonic Blast Man, 2, or even Ghost Chaser Densei for Super Famicom. You can't go wrong with any of those. Sticking with co-op games, Wild Guns is another great one that represents a style of gameplay you didn't see all that often on 16-bit home consoles, so in the interest of variety, this is a great one to add. Sure, there were other gallery shooters, but none of them touched how good this one is. I mean, just look at these boss fights. In a similar vein as Pocky and Rocky, this is a top-down run-and-gun game with some really creative enemy design. This game gets ridiculously intense, and it represents a unique co-op experience on the SNES. Yeah, I know there's a sequel, but that one's a bit more structured like something out of the Goemon series. The first game has more non-stop action. Shoot'em ups were also ignored when putting together the SNES Classic Package, and if you want to add one, you cannot go wrong with Space Megaforce. Even if you're not into games like this, it's a great one to add because if you suck at shoot'em ups, it's still a forgiving and player-friendly game. That's because the balance of speed is so well done here, along with the sheer amount of weapons you can pick up and upgrade as you progress. None of that infamous Super Nintendo slowdown here either. This is probably one of the 20 or 25 best SNES games, period. So it belongs here. And if you want more shoot'em ups, there's always stuff like Axelay, UN Squadron, or Makarov Scrambled Valkyrie for Super Famicom. Strangely enough, puzzle games were mostly ignored on the SNES Classic 2, unless you count Kirby's Dream Course. But, in my opinion, the most glaring omission from the SNES Classic lineup is Tetris Attack. Despite the wonky title, this game really doesn't have much to do with Tetris, it's such a well-made puzzle game with a clever and intuitive combination system. This is one of those games that's really easy to pick up, but really tough to master. And yes, of course, this is two-player versus as well, which makes it that much better.
If I could remove any one game from the SNES Classic lineup, it would probably be F-Zero. It just doesn't make much sense to have a single-player racing game in there. A better choice would be Top Gear, not only because it's two-player, but because it still has that fantastic sense of speed F-Zero has with a similarly outstanding soundtrack. Plus, I like dealing with a fuel meter rather than a damage meter because it leads to stressful moments like just barely petering out at the finish line. That's fantastic. I gotta mention sports games, and yup, it's gonna be the same sports games I always mention. Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, and NHL 96. If you need an American football game, go with Tecmo Super Bowl, and if you need a soccer game, go with International Superstar Soccer Deluxe. Each one of these are arguably the best of their kind on the SNES. They're all accessible to all kinds of players, and they're games you can get into even if you don't like sports, especially stuff like NBA Jam. I mean, how can you not love this? Last, I'll mention a game kind of out of left field. It's my pick for the best Super Famicom game to have never left Japan. It's Front Mission Gun Hazard. This is a side-scrolling action RPG centered around strategic elements like planning attacks, giving orders, and managing a job system within your platoon of mechs, all while getting swept up in a really well-told story that's involved and fast-paced. And it's all backed with a soundtrack composed by Nobuo Oematsu and Yasunori Mitsuda, among others. I mean, what else could you possibly want? And there's an English patch available on romhacking.net that you can utilize to make this playable. If you only pick one English patch Super Famicom game to add, make sure it's Front Mission Gun Hazard. Alright, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.